You are listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair on RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, goddammit! Get the point. Good. And now... Bend over. Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Hey, I'm here, but my opera is being a pain in the butt. Guess what? This is Grammy Mary here on RealLibertyMedia.com channel 3. Also on the RLMRadio.xyz site and the RLM TuneIn radio station. And if you're one of them cool kids on the block, you got the RLM Android app or app for your iPhone. Hey there, hey there, hey there. You're doing just pretty darn spiffy. You do that. Um, Ooh, Sergeant Report. These people should be hanged. You know, there's a lot of people that should be. Should be, would be, could be. But, you know, ain't gonna happen. Uh, So I'm not gonna worry about it too awful much. Okay. What's that? Oh, Stormy Daniels in... Ooh. Okay. So... Seeing as how my opera is being a pain in the wazoopy. Come on. Opera browser. Let's open. Open says me. If you're not going to, I'm just going to do this. Hey, everybody over here in the RLM. Opera is being a pain in the ass. So, I haven't finished transferring over to Waterfox. And so, now I'm paying the price for it. <laughs> Oh, well. Oh, well. Hey, my computer's thinking at least. I see the swirly thing going on. So, over here in the RLM, y'all get first dibs tonight. I see Barman right up top, and I also saw that Barman had tweeted me out over there on Twitter before my opera went katui. Um, Thanks, Barman, for doing that. You are the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. I also see Grimner is here, who is the RLM creator, because, well, you know, he's just that kind of guy. He's way cool like that. But he has been infected with Grimfinger. Darn it. And I think the aliens did it. Because they've been giving me stutter fingers today, too. Sunny beaches. I'll bet you that's that shit they're spraying in the sky. That's what's doing it. I swear, it is. I also see the lovely Moose Girl is here. Hey, Moosey, how are you doing? It's Friday. Yay. This week, it's a good thing this week is over. That's pretty much all I got to say about that. I also see the lovely Kate is here. Hey, Kate, from down in the great state of Florida. Oh, light rain where Goobrazilla is made a beer run. Sweet. Chug a lug, chug a lug. Say you want to holler hi to ho. <laughs> well, hey, hey, Beth Z. Heidi ho to you too, hun. And looky there, Chalcedony is also in the chat, as well as a double dip and a Chloe Chloe. Chloe Chloe, got an echo going on. You're afraid to click it? It's okay. Don't worry. Um, ooh, tidy whities I just saw that in the chat. I don't know that I really needed to see that. Wow. Okay. Uh, I'm here, kind of, sort of, maybe, although my computer is still not agreeing with me right now, but hey, poopy head. And looky there, I be Don C is here as well. Hey, Don, how you doing? And Java Doctor 2 is in the house. Hey, Java, how are you, hun? How's that little Lily doing? And JJ's the Scottish feller that's always playing some awesome tunages here as well. And Juana Taco. Mmm. Sounds yummy. Mmm. May have to do that this weekend. And looky there, Meister Brower. Hey, party, Woody. How you doing? I also see Mr. Asmodeus is here. Hey, Mr. Asmodeus. <laughs> How you doing, hon? And P. Bunyan is also in the house. Timber. As well as the lovely rain. See, Goobrazilla must be close to rain. Oh, because there's a light rain. 
RLM Fluky, the Vanna White of the RLM channel is here, as well as Rob Works. Did you fire the bubbler and I just missed it, Rob? I did have a couple of stutter finger moments earlier, so I may have missed it. God only knows. Aren't anarchists? We're not anarchists, are we? Anarchist. Okay. Uh, the lovely Mary B. I see that. And Beetle. And wait a minute. Let me let me not get ahead of myself. I see that trusty feller. Trust no one is also here, as well as Woody the Woodman. So we got a double dipping going on there. Beetle. Hi, Beetle. How's your world going? I also see Colfax 101 logged in, but away. I think that's Ninson Dubois. I also see Dakota, as well as the lovely Dima, and Frumpy. Hi, Frumpy. How are you doing, hon? Frumpy sharing links with Gooberzilla. It's pretty freaking awesome. Well, actually with the whole crowd, but yeah. Uh, Kozu is also in the house. Thank you ever so much, Rob Works, for firing up that bubbler. I need it. Afro man, because I got high. <laughs> <laughs> Who looks good enough to chase around with tidy whities uh, Do you have the tidy whities on, or are you slinging them and getting ready to throw them at her? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I already have a vivid imagination. I don't need that. <laughs> Hi, Kozu. How are you doing, hon? And looky there, the lovely Miri B from Down Under is here. Hi, B. How's your world, hon? Hope it's not too chilly there. It's kind of sort of chilly here. Um, not chilly weather, though, because I run out of chilly last night. So, oh, darn. I'm using up the last of my rocket fuel. <laughs> I also see Moy 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 is in the house, as well as Poxified and Pompo Ponsos, but they're marked away. Slim Jim Flim is here. Yay, Frumpy. I'm glad you're doing fine. Wow, there's quite a delay. That's cause of my tin can kite string and duct tape internet. I got the I got the high dollar premium shit going on out here in the boonies. <laughs> I also see Teddy is here. Hey Teddy, how are you, hon? And looky there, Phantom is rounding up the crew. And Phantom is the one that did my awesome intro. Thank you once again, Phantom. And uh slingshot oh. <laughs> You know, I've heard people using bra brassiers for that. You know, having the old double over the bowl, over the shoulder boulder holder kind of thing going on. Hmm. Okay. Well, you know what? Seeing as how, seeing as how, what the hay? Even my water fox isn't wanting to come up. What the hay? And heck, and all that fun shit. Come on. You guys might have to just put up with me just talking out my ass. <laughs> oh, that was fun. Um, come on, something. Wake up. Please. Okay. Oh, I know. It's because malware is doing its thing. Ah, that's why things are going slow, because malware is doing its thing. Okay, so let me see. What all have you guys been talking about over here besides Afro Man and Trump chased me around his hotel room in tidy whities Ew. Wow. Okay, I just finally read the title of that. It's like, ew. Uh, oh, you wish it was chilly, hot, and humid? Oh, wow. Wow, B. Well, you know, you could send some of that up here. I wouldn't argue one darn bit. Honest and for true, although yesterday was really pretty nice. It was up in the 60s, so I'm not going to complain a whole awful lot on that. Um, oh, beautiful melodies telling me terrible things. Wow. Okay, that's up to date. So why are you not opening my browsers? Somebody doesn't want me to read my browsers. What the hey? What the hey? That means I'm going to have to just kind of wing it here. Shit. That's going to... Y'all ain't going to like that. Um. Come on. Come on. <laughs> I'm really... Wow. 
This is sucking. Come on, Water Fox, do something. One of you guys. Open, open, says me. Someone, anyone. Come on. <sighs> okay, and you know what? I don't have any. Oh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. Just a minute. How about some Reader's Digest? <laughs> this is going to be fun. <laughs> Point and counterpoint. Hey, dogs versus cats. A dog teaches a boy fidelity, perseverance, and to turn around three times before lying down. Did you know that? Um, cats are smarter than dogs, so you can't get eight cats to pull a sled through snow. No, you cannot. Um, yeah. Come on. What the hey? Okay, I've at least got the swirly going. Come on, somebody. Hmm, back to this. So, wine versus beer. Wine is constant proof that God loves us and loves to see us happy. That's from Benjamin Franklin. But beer is better than wine. Human um, feet are continuously, or yeah, conspicuously absent from beer making. Ah, well, you, there you go. There you have that. Okay. Um, Hootie Doody Waddy. Which hate group has done the most damage to the United States? Oh, which hate group has done that? I would say Congress and the Senate. Is that what that counts for that? Okay, uh, Democrats versus Republicans. Oh, this should be good. Um, the demon craps are the party that says government will make you smarter, taller, richer, and remove crabgrass from your lawn. That's according to P.J. O'Rourke. On the counterpoint, the Republicans are the party that says government doesn't work and then they get elected and prove it. That is also from P.J. O'Rourke. Obviously, he knows, although I do like Lewis Black's thing better, just slightly, but because it's a little bit more risque, because he says that uh, Republicans and, and Democrats are basically a bowl of shit looking in the mirror at itself. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. Come on. What the heck is going on? Vinny! I see you, Vinny, in here. Come on. Somebody, you know when these finally do open up, things are going to get wild. My screen is going to go wah, 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 all over the place. So, yeah, this is going to be fun when it finally kicks in gear and does what it's supposed to do. Damn it. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, men versus women. Uh, on the point side, I've been married to one Marxist and one fascist, and neither one would take the garbage out. That's from Lee Grant, the actress. On the counterpoint, the, terror, um, the trouble with some women is that they get all excited about nothing, and then they marry him. That's from Cher. Well, Cher, honey, wow. I don't know what to tell you other than... Wow. So, okay. Uh, da, da, da. Vinny made it back from the abyss. Yay, Vinny! Oh, and he's a freaking Vinny. Yay, Vinny. Freaking Vinny. Okay. Fic fiction and non-fiction. The difference between fiction and reality is fiction has to make sense. That's from Tom Clancy. Um... And the counterpoint, be careful about reading health books. You may die of a misprint. Now, that's Mark Twain. And damn it, I got to tell you, Mark Twain knew his shit. That's just all there is to it. Okay. You know, this is going to be a really long show if my browsers won't open up. <laughs> oh, hey! <laughs> there we go. Hot diggy dog. I got all kind of speed dial thingies coming up. Cause <laughs> Son of a...
Pa. There you go. Y'all couldn't wait for that, could you? Okay, optimist versus pessimist. An optimist is someone who falls off the Empire State Building and after 50 floors says, so far, so good. Oh, that is, wow. And on the counterpoint, the nice part about being a pessimist is that you are constantly being either proven right or pleasantly surprised. Hey, there you go, Flasher. There's your new mantra, hun. Because you keep saying that you are the pessimist to my being so optimistic. Yes, I am. Because, you know what? I'm still breathing. So, I'm up to, I'm optimic, a little optimistic about that. What is that? He cured himself from the most dangerous, oh, World Truth TV. I've been doing lots of research on healthy things lately. Have you noticed? <laughs> Okay, um, this is Jane. Jane is in a relationship. Jane, do Jane doesn't post on social media about how much she loves her partner. She tells him this in person. She doesn't mention every little insignificant thing they do. Stop it. Because Jane knows nobody really gives a fuck. Jane is smart. Be like Jane. <laughs> Oh, there's your F-bomb of the night. So early in the evening. I like that one, though. Thank you, Zimran, for that. I like that. Okay. Um, dun, dun, dun. Let me go see who all's over here on this f and site. I see Bob Renner is over here. And, hey, thank you, Grimmy, for sharing it over here. Um, Grimmy is here. Bob Renner is here. Bobby Bain, Mary B., and KD Troxel. Yee New text shows Fix was in on e Clinton email probe. Ya think? No. I'm shocked. Shocked, I tell ya. Okay. I am going to finish reading these point counterpoints and then I'm going to check out this thing from Bob Renner because I kind of sort of saw, I saw his headline for it and I thought, okay, let's check this shit out. Bob's always putting some interesting stuff out. But first, blondes versus brunettes. I'm not offended by blonde jokes because I know I'm not dumb. And I also know that I'm not blonde. That's from Dolly Parton. <laughs> Those are wigs, by the way, in case you hadn't noticed. Because she doesn't like her own hair. Counterpoint, it was a blonde. A blonde to make the bishop kick a hole in the stained glass window. Really? Raymond Chandler. Hmm. And critic versus artist. He suffers from delusions of adequacy. Whereas critics are like eunuchs in a harem. They know how it's done. They've seen it done every day, but they're unable to do it themselves. Oh my God, is that true or what? I think it is. I think it is. Okay, so... What? These deals on computer reading glasses. I watched a video early today, earlier today where um, it gives you exercises to improve your vision. And I'm going to try them in the morning. So, we're going to see how well this works. There you go. Um, oh, hey, there's someone listening over here on, on Spreaker. Hi, whoever's listening in over on Spreaker. <laughs> okay, um, da -da -da -da. so I'm going to get to what Bob Redden wrote. What Bob wrote was, let's see, just a sec, check one more thing. Oh, thanks, Grimmy. Over, on, I'm closing Twitter too. Um, so, why innate human rights don't actually exist, which, okay, just by going by the headline, I've got to agree with him, but I want to hear his reasoning. So, in many of the posts made by anarchists and others who base their ideology on innate human rights, they talk about how, basically, if we just act from our innate human rights, that things would be wonderful. The problem with this stance is that innate human rights don't exist. So, first off, the concept of rights simply doesn't apply to nature. 
An often used example is a lion attacking a gazelle. It is stated that the gazelle has the innate right to defend himself. This is false. Ultimately, the only right the gazelle has is the ability to choose to defend itself or not. The word itself has no meaning outside of a civilization or society. There is no societal construct that is going to fine or imprison the lion for his assault. At no point do the gazelles get together and talk about how Bob's rights were violated by that lion who ate him. At no point is the lion thinking that he is about to violate the gazelle's rights. In nature, there is only action and the consequences of those actions. Everything beyond that is a human construct. So what about God-given rights? I would also call bullshit on that as well. Any God-given rights without enforcement are no rights at all. At best, they are divine suggestions on how it would be best to act. For example, God stated that life would be more enjoyable if we don't constantly slaughter each other. It's a valid point and probably very good advice. It is not, however, a statement of innate rights. So, am I saying that we should throw the uh, entire idea of rights out the window? Well, of course not. But I don't believe it is helpful to imagine something as an innate part of nature, human or otherwise, when it isn't. So, what are rights? Rights are the um, are those individual and societal boundaries that a society has determined that it is in its best interest to support. For example, society would, would have difficulty functioning under or functioning well if murder was not considered a violation of a person's rights. Not because it's wrong, but simply because that is what that society has determined to be currently beneficial to itself and its members, whether that is objectively true or not. This is supported by the individuals in the society because if I at least have the assurances that assaults upon my person won't be tolerated by the society at large, then I will be more inclined to function openly within it. Just imagine how personal interactions would go if there was no constraint on violence being perpetrated on another. Ooh, I don't want to imagine that. Um, yes, all critters have a natural sentient or all critters have a natural sentient beings have an instinct to defend themselves unless they got brainwashed. That is true, Goober. That is true. Hi, KD. I see you joined over here in the Aralumanumanum. Okay, back to Bob Renner's thing here. Yes, it's it's called it's very instinctive. It's called fight or flight, and that I think is probably in uh, every critter, and probably plants as well. I mean, why shun the plants? Fight or flight mechanism built into it. It's called self-preservation, and you either gotta run or stand there and fight them off, either way. Or, as in plants, they come up with some other mechanism to protect themselves from bugs or fungus or what have you, critters, like a noxious taste or just a good thing that a lot of people like to eat plants anyway. Although, I've never eaten a pine tree, and yes, Yul Gibbon said many parts are edible, but mm, I just can't go there. Just can't. So, back to this Bob Renner. Um, dun, 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 dun. Where was I at? Okay. Okay, so where does all of this leave us? It leaves us in the same state as we have always been, even if we didn't recognize it. Our rights and how individuals work in society is determined by us, 
and us alone. We do ourselves a great disservice by divorcing ourselves from the fundamental act and the responsibility that comes with it. We might be tempted to believe that these rights are universal and innate, and so are therefore universally expressed in all human cultures. Without taking the responsibility for these rights, we restrict our ability to change and improve our lives individually and collectively. Because we can't effectively change what you do not own. Ah, oh, thank you, Bob. Fundamentally, the only innate rights humans or any being truly has is the right to take action or not. Everything else is window dressing. As always, comments and questions are welcome. Well, thank you ever so much, Bob. That really is very good. An excellent perspective. I like Bob Renner, though. I've, I've known Bob Renner cybernetically since World Truth days. Like when I first joined World Truth way back in the... Cripes, almost six years ago now. Wow, I haven't interacted with Bob all that much of late, but this is over on Freedoms Network. So if y'all want to check it out, come on over to Freedoms Network, create an account or a, a page or whatever the heck, sign up and interact. It's a lot of fun. There's some pretty sharp people over here. And there are some doofuses over here. And I fall into either category on any given day. So... <laughs> just putting that out there um okay sweet so let's see no man is not created equal um there you go grim see world truth is still around because i gave it to Bo and grim that's why there is a world truth dot uh, MX. That's Marcos's world truth. I don't know if it's still around or not, but Marcos and um, and crew. <laughs> I'm not real sure who all's involved. Haven't been there since the changeover. And we'll just leave it at that. So. Okay. Um, da -da, da -da -da -da. So, since we had Bob with such wonderful information there, how about we go to this one over on worldtruth.tv. It is, um, he cured himself from the most dangerous type of cancer and left the doctor shocked, which I've been listening to an awful lot of different videos about this for the last week or so. Um, I know y'all know that I've had several family members that have been having a few issues, and so, ah, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> oh, Grammy, see, I don't get to see any of his stuff anymore because I, I, one of the few times I actually used a block, and I blocked him. Early days, blocked him. I'd had enough of his crap. So, yeah, you know that you can you can listen to someone that you vehemently disagree with for so long. But when the attacks just keep coming and there there is absolutely no logic to it, um, you just got to get to the point where it's like, I'm done. I'm done. You just carry on and do whatever the hell you want to do. And so, yeah, he mm, and, you know, I really, I tried to, you know, defend him quite a bit because, you know, everybody's jumping on his ass because he's an atheist and all this other fun shit. And I thought, hey, he he can express his opinion. But, you know, you come to the point where it's like, dude, expressing your opinion is just really, I'm not up for it anymore. So <laughs> I am no longer up for it anymore. And damn, KD. You got him to block you? See, I couldn't figure that shit out. I was trying to, and he just kept dishing it, and I just went, uncle. And so I blocked him. <laughs> I was just tired of his shit. Um, oh, there you go, Grim. Darn. Yeah, it sucks to be you, honey. 
<laughs> I don't know if anybody blocked me when I was running the site or not. I don't know if, if that was an option or not. And if it was, well, hey, have at it. You know, I don't, if, if people don't want to be around me, that's fine. That's their choice. I don't have that option. I don't get to not be around me. <laughs> I, I got to be around me all the time. So, oh well. Back to this article, because I really want to learn about this. The guy that cured himself the most dangerous cancer. So, the conventional cancer treatments include chemotherapy and as an Oh, let's see, as an only way to fight this disease. But unfortunately, it harms the body even more than the cancer itself. And yes, I've had people tell me, oh, but they've made such advances in chemotherapy. Yeah, they've gotten a lot better at making you sicker. You know, and it's just bad juju. They have not changed since the beginning of the 19th or the 20th century when they first started really pushing this shit on people. Um, and anything that comes up with some kind of actual treatment that fixes the problem, oh, well, we can't have that because that cuts into the continuing job security of big pharma. Oh, and if you look at all the tentacles that come off of that, if if just that industry alone were to crash, there goes your economic system. Dush. Dush. Because there are so many little feeders off of that. that it, but I think it's a price I'd be willing to pay <laughs> just to see Big Pharma dush. Or at least... I know. You know what Trumples could do that would really, really impress the hell out of me? If he could just do away with the FDA. Just do away with them. Say, okay, executive order. Because, you know, he could do that. He could just say, okay, you guys have overstepped your bounds. You are a bureau. You are a department. You do not write legislation. You do not make law. That is for Congress and Senate and POTUS. So, since you have overstepped your boundaries and you have been abusing people right and left for damn near a century, well, okay, it hasn't been around that long, but for lots and lots of years, he's going to write a lovely little executive order and say, you are disbanded, pack your shit, get the hell out. There you go. And then let the free market decide. You know, if, if people are tired of taking big pharma meds and they can, there are alternatives that they can do, they can decide that. And if it doesn't work out so well for them, then guess what? Those around them learn the lesson that it didn't work so well for them, so they won't go that route. Yeah, FDA needs to go bye-bye. But in any case, back to this article. Rant, squirrel. So... That is the reason why cancer patients turned to natural medicine, which is not really medicine. It is just fuel for the body. Your body will heal itself. In any case, if you are seeking for a safer way to treat your cancer, you are going to go natural. Namely, a great number of people have succeeded in defeating this deadly disease with homemade remedies and natural herbs. If you're not selling it to someone else, then the FDA needs to keep their frickin' nose out of your business, which means they've overstepped their bounds. They need to go away. So, apparently some of them have used carrots. Others have used cannabis or turmeric or turmeric, however you wish to pronounce it, um, and baking soda. But the newest remedy is honey, which honey is very good for you. It's better if you get local honey. There are some honeys that, um, what's that one down New Zealand or someplace? There's a certain kind, I can't remember the name of it now. There's a certain kind of honey that is really, really good for you immaterial of what part of the world you are from because of the components that are in it from the lovely little honeybees. Um, apparently honey has been considered to be a holy food for centuries, which, yeah, makes sense, since it's one of the most important natural remedies known to man. 
Throughout history, it was constantly used due to its numerous health benefits, mostly by wealthy people, as it was quite expensive, which is probably why they don't want to let you use it for that, because now just anybody can go and get honey, or just about. Explorers discovered bowels, or discovered bowels with honey in Tutankhamun. Oh, and I think it's bowls, honey, not bowels. <laughs> It's spelled B-O-W-E-L-S. That's bowels, not bowls. Oh, well, they discovered bowls with honey in Tutankhamun's tomb, which is over 3,000 years old. Romans and Greeks used the honey to strengthen the body and heal wounds, which, yes, it will. Um, thank you, Mary B. Manuka honey. Turmeric. Well, see, I say turmeric. Someone else says turmeric. Um, yeah, New Zealand honey. Thank you ever so much, Frumpy. And yes. Honey and baking soda, yes, is most definitely. And, you know, if you've got some apple cider vinegar with the mother in it, that's also really, there's just all kinds of things. You know, vitamin D, vitamin C, B12. I mean, it's fuel for your body so your body will heal itself yeah there's a lot of things that because you know mother nature made a clo enclosed system so everything is supposed to work with each other everything thrives off of everything else that's the way the system is supposed to work apparently 13 years ago a man from Zagreb called Ante Kresic uh, was told he had one of the deadliest cancers, lung cancer. Moreover, he was informed that he won't live much longer. Yet, as a perfectly healthy man today, due to his natural cancer treatment with honey and natural herbs, he defeated lung cancer, and now he keeps bees. Be nice to the bees. Isn't that right, Mary B? He was released from the hospital in April, and he decided to try the honey treatment. After several months, he went for a regular checkup in the hospital in Zagreb, and the doctors were shocked because he was still alive. Hence, they advised him to proceed with consuming his homemade remedies and therapies. That would not happen in USA. They would probably throw your ass in jail, or at least put duct tape over your mouth or something. Make sure you don't tell anybody else and give you something else so that you would die before you could tell someone else because that's the way the FDA works. Apparently in summer, his disease was gone, and when he had his blood checked, there was no sign that he was ev had ever been ill. Afterwards, he decided to share his experience in order to help people with similar problems like his. The stories of Kresik and people like him serve as evidence that honey mixed with other natural spices as ginger, pine needles, and other herbs can defeat cancer. See, there, there you go. Yule Gibbons just, I made fun of him, and there you go. Sorry, Yule. I know you're out there in the great beyond, but pine needles, go figure. Apparently, a woman from Bosnia also succeeded in defeating cancer with a mixture prepared from honey and ginger. She recommends that the honey used should be homemade or bought from reliable beekeepers. She also shared her recipe, hoping to help others. So, if you're faunching at the bit, here is the recipe. Chop two big ginger roots and mix them with 18 ounces or half a kilogram of organic honey. Put the mixture in a jar and consume one tablespoon. Use wooden or plastic spoons three to four times a day. The first effects will be achieved within four days. Remember to keep positive and never give up the struggle for your health, regardless of the doctor's predictions for that is the first step in your improvement. Um, and there is a link at the bottom of this that has um, more tips on honey. And so I'm going to go ahead and share this so y'all can peruse it.
Um, ooh, who's going to turn into... Who's going to turn into a Klingon? Never shit in your own backyard. That is true. Hmm. Okay. Um. Yeah. There you go, KD. And you know, I listened to a video earlier today, and the gal was... Mm, it was one of those things where you had to garner the kernel from the chaff, and there was an awful lot of chaff in the video. But she did have a couple of very interesting points that I felt rang pretty true. Um, that basically, they are, they are doing germ warfare on us right now, and the flu is just um, a part of their germ warfare against the rest of us. Who they are, I don't have a freaking clue. Whoever writes the checks for the assholes that drive the planes that play tic-tac-toe in the sky. That's they. And the rest of us, yeah, we're the ones that they're trying to bump off. And the flu is the first one. And you, did you know, and this is also from a Dr. John Bergman video, which if you aren't subscribed to Dr. John Bergman over on YouTube, subscribe to him, or just look him up on the internet. He has his own web page as well. I can't remember that. I don't remember if it's just doc, um, Dr. John Bergman or what, but Um, but in any case, uh, just ask John Wayne. Ooh, yeah. Um, in any case, Dr. John was talking about, uh, the flu and the, um, mortality rate for, uh, children from the flu and what happened after the flu vaccines came out. And wow, oh wow, did it ever spike after the flu vaccines came out and they started saying, you need to vaccinate your child. Same thing for people 60 years of age and older. So don't get the flu shot. You know, they say it's 10%, um, works 10% of the time, which means it does not work. 95 or 90 percent of the time just like chemotherapy you know a lot of times they say that you have um, a survival rate of three percent if you have chemotherapy and survive um, five years cancer free that's three percent which basically means 97 percent do not survive so don't let them fool you with their little numbers game. Look at the reverse side as well. Oh, the X-Files showed a they. Oh, I'm going to have to check that out. Hmm. Hmm. Thanks, Grimmy. Yeah, that's why they don't want you doing Laetrile either, B17, because it cures cancer. You know, there's all kind of things out there that actually, and that it's not really a cure because cancer is just, everybody has it roaming around in their body. Everybody does. Um, and when they tell you, you know, oh, it's genetic. Cancer is like breast cancer is genetic and it runs in your family. You may have an aunt or a couple of aunts that have had breast cancer. But stop and think of all of the ones that did not have cancer. It is not genetic. Is it, a, it is a genetic expression. There is a difference. Look it up. I'm not going to tell you everything. You got to look this shit up. So, okay. Now, over here to, oh, I better put that over on the effing site as well. Um... And, you know, some of the other John Bergman ones that I listened to today. Yes, your body does recreate itself. The, did you know that the bone and um, cartilage, which is the hardest part of your body, that regenerates every 18, within every 18 months to two years, you have a completely new skeletal system. The reason why you have continuing issues is because you're not feeding your body the proper fuel to repair 
whatever damage you had done. Your body rebuilds itself. Every two years you have a completely new body. It's just that the cells don't know how to recreate better because you're not giving them the proper fuel to be able to recreate a better. So, better version of whatever it is. So, <sighs> okay, come on. It doesn't want to share. So, oh, I know why. I know why. I know why. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> okay, from the federalist.com, I saw this over on Twitter. 18 questions CNN needs to answer after getting busted for fake news. This is from December 8th of 2017. Early on Friday, CNN promoted its latest breathless report purporting to show collusion between the Trump campaign and Russia. I saw that collusion. I really did. You know what it was? It was, um, they had a picture of, of Putin standing there and his tie was somewhat askew and they closed, they did a close up in on his tie and it was a Trump tie. Yeah. Hi, TD. Oh, you're listening over on Spreaker. How awesome. Thank you, sweetheart. Um, so, yeah, that's the collusion. Putin bought Trump ties. That's the, that's the ties. Pretty much. So, duh. Anything else is just stuff and nonsense, smoke and mirrors, things to get you distracted which is pretty much all the mainstream media does is keep you from keep you distracted from what's right in front of you <coughs> and keep you scared, keep you concerned, keep you arguing over shit that does not directly affect you. <clears throat> okay, so back to this. In June, CNN was forced to pull one of its Russia Trump conspiracy stories that did not meet CNN's editorial standards, quote-unquote. The discredited story was based on a single anonymous source who connected Anthony Scaramucci, a prominent ally of trump to a Russian investment fund managed by the Kremlin-controlled bank. Three journalists who worked on the story were fired. Oh, darn. But many of the other stories CNN pushed had serious problems, including one that claimed fired FBI head James Comey would testify he never told Trump Stilskin three times that he was not under FBI investigation. That's precisely what he testified the next morning after the story ran. Still, other stories are headlined explosively and presented on air breathlessly while being quite anodyne. Whatever that word means. Earlier this week was a piece he uh, headlined exclusive. Previously undisclosed email shows follow-up after Trump Tower meeting. Yada, yada, blah, blah. Apparently the piece quietly revealed that Trump Jr. didn't receive the follow-up and the follow-up was in no way incriminating or suggesting treasonous collusion to steal an election. Such stories have been par for the course for the Russian Trump collusion narrative. Really, guys, move along. That horse is dead. It's rotting. It's got maggots all over the corpse. The flies are even getting tired of it. Friday morning's report, which got the usual suspects extremely excited, which was one such story, broadcast widely on air and online. It intimated that Donald Trump Jr. was given an advance notice about documents hacked or fished from Democrats before they were publicly available. The story didn't include any evidence that the random dude who emailed Trump Jr. was correct or that his email had been opened. 
that he was connected to Russia or anything else to justify the excitement that those all in on the collusion narrative had in response to it. But more than that, it turned out that CNN completely botched the story. Instead of advance notice that this random dude sent into Trump's affiliates, it was late notice that this random dude sent in. The Washington Post obtained the email and reported that CNN had completely messed up the story, claiming a September 4 date to an email that was actually sent on September 14th, a day after the documents were publicly available. Oops. Well, you know, you erase a one in front and there you go. Despite the story being completely meaningless as revised, CNN merely posted a correction instead of a retraction. And CNN's PR team tweeted out that the initial reporting of the date on the email sent to members of the Trump campaign about WikiLeaks documents, which was confirmed by two sources to CNN, was incorrect. We have updated our story to include the correct date and present the proper context for timing of email. Yada, yada, blada, blada. Okay, I'm done with that. It's like, yeah, you lied, you got caught with your pants down. You had tidy whities on with skid marks. Move along. Move along. Um, dun, 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 dun. Oh, there you go, KD. I like that. They. Yep. They do. Whoever they are. Um... I'm going to put this over on the effing site as well, and then I'm going to move along because it's like, okay, we all know CNN lied. God only knows. Mm. <sighs> and I know people that will go out of their way to say, no, oh, what? oh my God, my mother did it yesterday. Went down to see my mom yesterday. Hi, Bobby. I see you over here on effing site. Went down to visit my mom, had a few other things to do in my hometown, and so stopped in to see her. And as the way it usually goes when I go to see my mom, she always has treasures. We, I, I told her that I have decided that she has a warp in her basement where lost treasures that only people in my family would truly appreciate, they you know, somebody's going to throw them away and they just warp right into my mom's basement. I swear to God, that's how it works. Well, yesterday she had a couple of things and I went, oh, that's cool. Oh, hey, I like this. And so I started a box. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Once I start, you know, it's, I should just not start. And, uh, yeah, came home with an awful lot of things that I really, really didn't need. Oh, I keep thinking I need to get rid of stuff, and here I keep accumulating stuff because, well, mom, mom has treasures, and now I have some. And she keeps telling me, but you have more room than I do. And I keep telling her, not anymore. <laughs> Needless to say, I have more treasures that I'm going to have to figure out what to do with later. So, I, how crazy. Okay, you know what? <clears throat> Let's go with something fun, something uplifting, something to make us feel better, or at least make me feel better. So how about this from the intuitivescribe.blogspot.com? Happiness is invisible breeze. There you go. Happiness is an invisible breeze. No, not one with a pungent aroma. It's an inv invisible breeze. <laughs> so, sensing is our emotionally wholesome way of understanding ourselves and making connections. Intuitive thinking is how we roll with timing and purpose to actively create order. 
Life is full of the unexpected, the impossible, and the unknown. So stay tuned to what you need, because life is 10% what happens and 90% how we react to it. Choices, not chance, determine our future. So this was posted on January the 8th. Yes. Oh, you. <laughs> it's horrid, isn't it, Chloe? But you know what? A lot of mom had a stack of the really pretty uh, painted china bowls from like my Auntie Wanda and my grandparents. And I couldn't just let them stay there. So <laughs> I have no idea what I'm going to do with them, but they're very pretty china, painted china bowls and there and then there was a few other things <laughs> oh well back to this story I'd, it it was that invisible breeze of happiness that hit me and it i just couldn't stop myself <laughs> apparently uh, this is an answer to a friend <clears throat> so uh, there's no such thing as fixed reality. Everything changes. Sensing what is meaningful and taking action that serves you is the path to happiness. So tune to the part of your mind that is the seat of action. Listen for it. You know when things feel right, life is amazing. Intuitive thinking resolves nagging doubts and question and answers questions by taking the pressure off emotional thinking out of the equation. Emotional thinking isolates us from each other by disconnecting intuitive priorities that bring happiness to the flow of life. So the purpose of emotions is to highlight what we sense, not dominate our thinking. A disconnect happens when emotions define choices. Noticing what you sense will pull you back to the present. Intuitive thinking paves the road to action that brings happiness. No matter what you're thinking or experiencing, it is your intuition that balances your need with the present. Timing, health, creativity, and love are intuitive connections that affect the nature by enhancing how we sense our day-to-day -day lives. Oh, here we go. Sensual thinking <laughs> is our seamless support system. Really? It's really very simple, uh, or very simple sensual thinking is um, intuitive living. I did not know that. Apparently, sensual thinking is present, personal, natural, but not emotional. Huh. Intuitive choices lead to satisfaction. Okay. <laughs> Notice what you sense to unburden realities and to rearrange and rebalance the weight of your responsibilities. Intuition is the reality check that launches desire. Okay, I know you do need to listen to your gut. That is your intuition right there. And if you got an uneasy feeling in your gut, you best be for looking a little bit closer at what's going on around you because that is your intuition letting you know. It's holding the flag up and saying, danger, Will Robinson, danger. So, intuitive thinking often surprises us and we do more um, than we had ever imagined. Balancing perspective to sync with the big picture of our dreams is happiness. Our five senses arc to understand boundaries and limits, while intuitive thinking defines and clarifies how to navigate. Every day is unpredictable. Mm -hmm. We adapt to rhythms in the present. And move through times like clouds in the sky. Yes, I see someone's sensual thinking. <laughs> Frumpy, you're not supposed to be letting everybody know that. <laughs> 
essential yeah, thinking are the posts in Graham's blanket fort. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, that's why my blanket fort is my happy place. So. <laughs> Okay, so to go on with this, reasons and answers change, but the bottom line of self-respect stays the same. Our intuitive goal is connection and survival. Sensual thinking keeps us balanced. See, if you don't let me go to my blankie fort, then I get very unbalanced. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so commit to what feels meaningful shake free of emotional stagnation and unhelpful expectations you place on yourself because the truth you need will surface. When excitement unbalances the flow of life, intuition makes us curious, uh, dignified, and courageous to connect excitement of the moment with thoughts, dreams, and heart. That sentence does not make a whole hell of a lot of sense. Sorry. Apparently, intuitive thinking serves needs that guide actions to con confronting inner stability we call momentum. Bloody, 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 yada, yada, yada. Who wrote this? Thanks, Jane Bernard, because, honey, you could have said this a hell of a lot easier, I think. Apparently, you can sense the bigger picture of reality when. Uh, that connects with your future and our world. Find, uh, feel which way the winds are blowing. Commit to what feels meaningful before you buy a pair of shoes. But I really want those shoes. Accept a job or watch TV or eat dessert. Oh, but I finished off the apples that I baked last weekend. Last night. That is very good. Um... Sense what is meaningful and take actions that serve you. Anything is possible if you've got enough nerve. That's from J.K. Rowling. So every day we navigate an unpredictable theater of the absurd and wonderful. Timing, health, adventure, travel, and love are everywhere. Happiness is an invisible breeze. Well, thank you very much. I do agree with the happiness as an invisible breeze. The rest of it, sweetheart, could have done with a little less blah de blah de blah. <laughs> Inner Vulcan, huh? May you live long and prosper. Huh. <sighs> See, I got suckered in. Darn it all. Talk about it only enough to do it. Dream about it only enough to feel it. Think about it only enough to understand it. Ah, continuity. Well, I'm just going to let her do her continuity, and I'm going to move along. So, you know, I find some of the coolest links on the side of the article that I clicked on, and I closed a lot of those articles. <laughs> Damn it! Damn it! I hate when that happens. Oh well. Wink, wink. I'll just put that there. So, yeah. Speaking of intuitive thinking, uh, actually, I'm gonna go here. This is something that I saw on Twitter earlier. Um, and I really like the headline. I'm holding my breath on the rest of it. But, this is from DailySignal.com. The Brand Memorandum. The Justice Department reaffirms its commitment to the rule of law. Yeah, right. Let's find out about this shit, shall we? It is common for agencies to issue a variety of document, um, generically termed guidance documents, ah, to inform the public how the agency interprets the law. Yay. That's all well and good. There are a bazillion statutes and regulations to steal a phrase. They outnumber the grains of sand on the beach, and yes, they do. <clears throat> Anything that agencies can do to help tell the public what laws the federal government has adopted and how it reads them is to our benefit. 
In fact, Senator Ron Johnson, a Republican of Wisconsin, recently introduced a bill, the Guidance Out of Darkness, or Good, oh great, I can't wait for this shit, that would require agencies to post on their websites every guidance document they adopt. If that bill were to become law, it would take a step in the right direction because it would help tell the public the rules of the road. No, because that road is so oh, too convoluted. It is worse than one of those great big, you know, they call it a clover leaf. Holy shit. No, it's one of those crazy ass frequency spiral things that there's no way you can navigate it and wind up where you want to be the first time around. They're crazy, I tell you. Apparently, we do not have to wait for Congress to pass legislation to see an improvement in this field. On January 25th, really? Yesterday? The Associate Attorney General, Rachel Brand, did the nation a solid by issuing a memorandum. Oh, we get the memo. Soon to be known as the Brand Memorandum preventing Justice Department lawyers from treating agency guidance documents as law when the government brings a civil enforcement action in court against a private party. Which to me is just so much yada yada blah blah. Apparently Americans need an alternative to the mainstream media, but this can't be done alone. Really? Yeah, we all need to step up and be our own media. Research! and shift through all that chaff. That's a good way of putting it, chaff. Apparently the brand memorandum is a valuable improvement in administrative law and helps to return us to a government under the rule of law. Yeah, I ain't holding my breath. The brand memorandum implements a memorandum issued by Attorney General Jeff Sessions in November of 2017. Sessions prohibited Justice Department officials from issuing memoranda that purport to be law by creating rights or obligations on parties outside of the executive branch. Yada, yada, blah, da, blah, da, blah. Aware that department officials had followed that practice in the past, Sessions decided that the matter needed to be addressed at a cabinet level. He explained that Justice Department officers will issue guidance documents explaining the department's interpretation of a law or the factors that officials consider when deciding whether to bring an enforcement action. What the hell? Bring an enforcement action. All righty. But guidance documents do not undergo the notice and comment process established by the Administrative Procedural Act and therefore cannot create rights or impose duties on members of the public. Sessions therefore prohibited department officials from attempting to treat non-binding advice as if it were law. Huh. Well, how about we tell that to the frickin' FDA as well? Non-binding advice is not law. This is just more and more convoluted and muddy and shitty, and we're, we're going deep into the uh, outhouse now, peeps. Apparently, in doing so, the Attorney General brought Justice Department policy in line with Article 1 lawmaking process, specifically by the bicameralism and presentment requirements, whatever the hell that means. And the Article 3 adjudicatory process, the Fifth Amendment Due Process Clause, and the Administrative Procedure Act. Which to me pretty much tells me there's one, two, three, four, four unnecessary things there because I thought the Fifth Amendment Due Process Clause should pretty much cover that. Obviously, I'm mistaken, according to them. The new brand memorandum carries the Sessions Memorandum one step further. 
Brand concluded that the principles stated in the session's memorandum must also guide Justice Department lawyers when they bring what she termed affirmative civil enforcement. Huh? Oh, affirmative civil enforcement lawsuits against private parties. In those actions, she wrote, the department may not use its enforcement authority to effectively convert, convert agency guidance documents into binding rules. Blah, 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 blah. The brand memorandum directive is effective immediately for all civil enforcement lawsuits. Immediately. Is anyone else bored with this shit? It's like, really? Can we have just a little more doublespeak? Because I actually almost understood ten words out of that whole gobbledygook that I just read. I. Okay. Nonsense, nonsense, blah de blah de blah. So... Here you go. I'm going to go back to something that is really, really important. Something we all need to know. Because I think we've all been there. This is from PizzaBottle.com. <laughs> 25 people gave their petty but completely legitimate reasons for breaking up with someone. Apparently, I looked at him, really looked at him from a distance and realized that his head was just way too big for his body. So I broke up with him. <laughs> really? Alrighty. Apparently there are as many reasons to break up with someone as there are things that attract people to one another in the first place. I wonder if I can use any of these to break up with the government. You suppose? You think it would work? Because their head is way too big or maybe I should say their ego is way too big there ain't room enough for both of us on this planet one of us is gonna have to go and I think you need to go <laughs> how's that sound so <clears throat> apparently when it comes to uh, time to end things and move on there are big acceptable universally understood reasons you know like they cheated on you or they're rage monsters or you fell out of love you know you fell into love and you realized you got all that goop all over you and you decided to stand up and wash off and all of a sudden you're out of it again some people it really is that easy then there's the stuff that that's ostensibly small but which indicate bigger personal flaws or which are so obnoxious and annoying that you just can't get past them. So here are some of those recently revealed by 25 real people. Number one, a childlike sense of whimsy and eating habits. She refused to eat anything besides chicken nuggets and french fries. No substitutions. Okay, I would not have even started a relationship. Sorry, let alone, wow, you know, honey, I need the ring back because damn it girl no wouldn't I no number two apparently she had Nickelback lyrics tattooed on her back I think that would be a make or break moment for Grimmy Grimmy doesn't like Nickelback hmm or how about number three she pronounced coleslaw cold slaw and apparently that was just the last straw <laughs> <laughs> or number four his name is David what okay uh, um, she had a mole on her eyelid and every time I kissed her I saw it when I was leaning in I started having dreams that the mole was talking to me <laughs> that's somebody with the more messed up mind than mine wow or how about number five um she ate a chicken drumstick with a fork and a t-bone steak with her hands well 
<coughs> excuse me um yeah that's interesting but i don't know if it's breakup worthy but eh, to each his own how about number six uh, she put the spoon into the sugar jar after stirring her coffee, leaving clumps of coffee sugar. Oh, that's just rude. That's just ru what you can't just say, "Hun, I would appreciate it if you don't do that." You, no, we have to break up. I just, I can't live with someone that does this. I just can't. How about number seven? Every time I yawned, she thought it hilarious if she stuck her finger in my open mouth. Oh. I, I'd have to bite down, <laughs> which would probably make her break up with me, but, you know, I would, no, excuse me. Number eight, he had a deodorant clump in his armpit hair. Oh, wow. <laughs> etch a sketch, etch a sketch. Oh, man. How about number nine? She held her fork overhanded, as in a shovel technique. You can't take someone like that anywhere. Oh, I can't. You know, everybody's getting that way. What the hell is the deal? I have noticed that. And although I don't consider it breakup worthy, it's definitely one of those things that I just want to go, what? Do you just hold it like a shovel and lean down to your plate and just start shoveling in and that fork just goes... I mean, we learned how to hold forks differently, apparently. I don't hold it like a shovel, and I tried to teach, well, I did teach my children to not hold it like a shovel, but I have grandchildren that hold it like a shovel, and it's like, ah, really? Are we reverting to caveman days? I know, that's a pet peeve of mine. How about number 10? She didn't believe in the moon landing. Okay, see ya, love you, bye. To the guy that believed in the moon landing because seriously see I love you bye you just go right ahead and hey you know that's cool um, but if I don't believe in it and you just can't hang with me well don't let the door hit you or the good Lord split you so number 11 she wouldn't eat scalloped potatoes because she didn't eat seafood <laughs> <laughs> oh good lord <laughs> that's funny i don't care who you are uh <laughs> oh you gave that girl a pork grimmy good job <laughs> excuse me yes KD, if a person doesn't believe in the moon landing, that means that they are capable of critical thinking. One must have, you know, follow the evidence. Uh, oh, that sucks, I be Don C. Darn it all. Well, you, you don't want to work for them anyway. Okay, number 12. Um, she poured her milk first and then the cereal in the bowl. Oh my God, where's the guillotine? Are you kidding me? So, BFD. She wants to make sure she has just the right. And then she pours the cereal and then you squish it down with the spoon. Not that I do that. I do my cereal first and then I hold my hand over the cereal and pour milk because it invariably overflows the cereal. So maybe her way is better. I don't know. Wow, touchy, touchy people. How about number 13? She put mustard on her fries by applying it to her hand first and then rubbing it all over the fries. Then she licked the mustard off her hand. Oh, honey, I think she did that just so you would break up with her. I seriously do. <laughs> Nobody does that unless they're seriously trying to dump someone and they don't want to be the bad guy. So, yeah, that's it. Um... Number 14, she always smelled like peanut butter, even though she never ate it. Wow. Peanut, peanut butter, jelly, peanut, peanut. That's, that's interesting. I wonder if she used it for deodorant. Hmm. 
Oh, good Lord. Yeah. Number 15. She ate her peas one at a time. One at a time. Maybe she's savoring the flavor. You picky ass. Don't rush her. She's trying not to overeat. Chew your food. 20 chews. Every oh, wow. I would go nuts. <laughs> hey, whatever, you know. Number 16. When she watched shows on the DVR, she wouldn't fast forward through the commercials. Why the hell do you record it on a DVR if you don't fast forward through the commercials? Seriously? That's what a DVR is for. Duh. Number 17. She wore jean shorts. Oh, egad. Such a fashion faux pas. And obviously they were not Daisy Dukes or you would have been fine with it. <laughs> Number 18. <laughs> oh, here's here's the one I read at the beginning. I looked at him, really looked at him from a distance and realized that his head was just way too big for his body. You know, that's Vanna White. Duh, and everybody has a hubba hubba hunker for Vanna White, don't they? <coughs> Excuse me. I've been talking too much. Yes, I admitted to it, JJ's. Number 19. Someone in my life died, and she said, I'm sorry for your loss. So you broke up with her. Petty much? I have verbal faux pas from time to time. Okay, I have them all the time. But in any case, number 20. It was four days before my birthday, and she said she was going to get me a gift. I knew I couldn't break up with her for at least 30 days after accepting her gift, and I wasn't willing to make a 34-day commitment to the relationship. <laughs> well, at least <laughs> you broke up with her before she got you a gift. <laughs> Okay, uh, number 21, she was the loudest eater I ever met. She constantly chewed with her mouth open and smacked her lips. God forbid if she really liked it. Then there was a litany of mmm and nom 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 as well. It was like dating a, the fucking cookie monster. <laughs> Okay, I can't, I can't, I can't handle that chewing with your mouth open shit either. I mean, I even got after my grandkids. Do you mind? I really don't want to see everything you're eating, okay? I see it before it goes in your mouth. Don't need to see it while it's in there. Mmm, that's just rude. <laughs> Number 22. Um, she walked like a T-Rex. How do you know what a T-Rex walked like? Huh? Were you around, you ancient fucker? <laughs> number 23 oh he told me I was in his cat's chair oh yeah yeah I would have to have some serious thoughts about that one wow uh, number 24 he pronounced the I or the oh the L in salmon Salmon. So, maybe he's from that part of the country that does that. Hmm. And finally, number 25. One day I realized she looked like Paul Dano. And I couldn't unsee it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's just funny. I don't care who you are. Okay. Wow. Yeah, there's a few of those that I would most definitely have to say something. I don't know that they're breakup worthy, but I would definitely have to say something. <clears throat> Crazy people. Crazy, I tell you.
Okay, what was that? Uh, who eats cereal? I do. I like shredded wheat. Um... Excuse me. Hmm. Captain Crunch. Ooh. Yeah, Captain Cr Captain Crunch was one of those cereals that, you know, after you have about three or four bites of Captain Crunch, the roof of your mouth is raw. I don't know what the hell is it about that stuff. I haven't eaten that since I was long time ago, but it left a left an impression that's for damn sure wow um and i know adults that still eat cap and crunch i do like my shredded wheat though and uh, i like wheat checks don't get them very often but i don't eat cereal very often actually if i do eat cereal it's because i'm making like a snack mix and i will throw some like wheat checks or rice checks in there along with the uh, honey roasted peanuts and craisins and pumpkin seeds and yeah whatever else i can find to just throw in there and shake a shake a shake and pretzels and yeah huh these are funny though okay so let's see here i think i'll actually even put that over on mines just because Yeah, there you go. Now, I'm going to go back to my pocket. Because I did put some other stuff in there. How about we... Okay, I think I will end with something very, very nutritious. But first, first, I've got to do the pig thing. I've gotten addicted to doing the This Date in History. And I need to go check out Mrs. Hambo's page on Fakie Book because she'll do that as well. Um, so over here on the pig, their word of the day is predator. It's a nifty remote controlled weapon. Wait, you guys have not updated that. That's the same one as the other as the other day. Uh, in their quotable quotes section, if stupidity got us into this mess, then why can't it get us out? Uh, well, Will Robert Rogers, because um, you cannot solve a problem with the same mindset or same thought pattern as created it mm. so let's see apparently being black in America is a disability according to a black law professor huh okay <coughs> <coughs> excuse me I have got a tickle in the back of my throat better stop um oh apparently blackness of course is not by itself an impairment that's from paul emil thanks paul emil apparently blackness is disabling really mm, only for those that allow it to be disabling dipshit okay so <clears throat> Today, this date in history, the 26th of January, 1964, the Beatles got their first number one, I Wanna Hold Your Hand, that's from Cashbox, and also this date in history, the 26th of January, 1981, the 52 Americans held hostage by Iran for 444 days arrive in the United States and were reunited with their families. In related news, ex-president Jimmy the Jellyfish Carter seen leaving Washington, D.C. with his tail between his legs. Really? Okay, and lastly, this date in history, the 26th of January, 1999. In Louisville, Kentucky, a man received the first hand transplant in the United States. Applause ensues for the first surgical hand job. Oh, good Lord, you guys. Oh, you guys. Although that is kind of cool. He's now able to clap because you do know the sound of one hand clapping, don't you? 
<laughs> okay, and I see this off to the side. Um, from the bottom of our piggish hearts, Pig says, bite me to Ron Righteous and Sally Salvation, who intrude on our lives uninvited to shill for their favorite supernaturalism. We try to be thrilled, but it's not easy. When, you're, when you ignore our repeated thanks but no thanks, you force us to throw your ass out. No means no, Holy Roller Sparky. And from the bottom of our piggish hearts, Pig says, Bite me to the following douchebags. Public sector unions and their henchmen. Media sluts like Gloria Allred. Race hustlers like Jesse Jackson and Co. Taggers and the snooty cretins who say it's art. Any whiner, complainer, or sniveler that feels they are entitled to your money, government cheese, and not getting their precious feelings get hurt. <clears throat> they also say bite me to busybodies, Budinskis and nosy neighbors, spammers, robocallers, and junk mail punks who invade your privacy and sanity. My neighbor with a hair trigger car alarm that blares endlessly can bite me. My co-worker who has been in the USA for 25 freaking years and still can't make himself understood in English can bite me. I'm sorry, honey. That wonderland moon bat who keeps moving the things I need, then can't remember where she put them, can bite me. Really? Hmm. Humor challenged eateries that spew. Stop that. Humor challenged eateries that spew asinine restraining orders can bite me. Asshats whose stages sit in. At a four-way stop can bite me. Program directors who make weekend radio unlistenable can bite me. Wow, you guys are just really, really tickled, aren't you? Um, let's see. Pig bunker neighbors who have a tin ear when it comes to good music can bite me. Pig publishers who don't give me ample room for all my bite me's can bite me. Clear the room, pigsters. He's gonna blow. Oh, hambo. Hambo. Breathe. Breathe. It's really simple. <laughs> Calm down, hambo. That's a wee bit testy. Oh, well. That's just a sampling of what hambo has on his pull my finger top story for Friday, January the 26th. If you want to come check it out, it's over on PIGazette.com. Yeah, those wild and way crazy guys over there on Pig Gazette. <sighs> they are a mess sometimes. They really are. Okay, now from Dr. Axe. You knew I was going to have to go there somewhere along the way. Give you something healthy. From DrAxe.com, iodine-rich foods. So, are you eating enough iodine-rich foods? Are you? Hmm? <coughs> Excuse me. Iodine is considered one of the body's vital nutrients, responsible for regulating thyroid function, supporting a healthy metabolism, aiding in growth and development, and preventing certain chronic diseases like cancer. Unfortunately, Many adults don't consume enough iodine-rich foods and are deficient in iodine. Therefore, many suffer from a range of negative health consequences as a result, known as iodine deficiency disorders, or IDDD. Iodine is present throughout the body in just about every organ and tissue, needed by almost every bodily system to keep us alive and energized. And for this reason, Iodine deficiency poses many risks. An alarming thought, considering that some sources suggest around 50% or more of the adult population in Western developed nations are iodine deficient. And I do have to say, my doctor said that um, a lot of people out here in the Midwest are iodine deficient simply because we don't eat enough seafood because you can get iodine from a lot of different seafood. 
Uh, one of the most widespread symptoms of iodine deficiency is thyroid disorders. Thyroid function relies on proper levels of iodine. So too much or too little can cause many serious health problems. And the thyroid is one of the body's master glands responsible for balancing hormones. And thyroid disruption caused partially by a diet low in iodine or low in iodine rich foods can create such negative reactions as fatigue, weight gain or loss, hormone imbalances, mood changes and much much more. You know, it's one of those, but wait, there's more kind of things. So, um, common signs of an iodine, now I'm kind of skipping through some of these, so. Common signs of an iodine deficiency include trouble producing saliva and properly digesting food, swollen salivary glands and dry mouth, skin problems including dry skin, Poor concentration and difficulty retaining information. Ah, oh, that could possibly be me. Yes. Eat more salt. Oh, yes. And not just any salt. Sea salt. Either uh, pink Himalayan salt or sea salt. Don't eat the table salt that has iodine added or... Yeah. Definitely. <clears throat> Get your... Um, let's see. Yeah, sea salt or um, pink Himalayan salt. And, you know, do like half a teaspoon every morning or something, if nothing else. Get that in your system, get you started. Um, let's see, increased re risk for thyroid disease, increased risk for uh, fibrosis and fibromyalgia, and a higher risk for developmental problems in babies and children. So, let's see. Um, several, let's see, what are more people experiencing, or why are more people, well, experiencing iodine deficiency? Several reasons might be to blame. A reduction in the amount of naturally iodine-rich foods in people's diets, which is wild caught fish, green vegetables, and sea vegetables, for example. Um, a higher exposure rate to certain chemicals found in processed foods that reduce iodine absorption especially the compound called bromine, uh, found in many plastic containers and baked goods, and a depletion in the amount of iodine found in our soils. Huh, a lot of this has to do with some of the nasty shit we're putting in the soil and the overplanting that we're doing. Bromine, found in lots of industrial packaged or produced packaged food products, is a particular interest to researchers since it's known to block iodine rich foods from being used and absorbable to some degree. Bromine or bromine, however you pronounce it, is able to displace iodine and might lead to higher rates of iodine deficiency. When it comes to soil depletion, research points to the fact that, <coughs> excuse me, around the, around the world, Soil contains um, varying amounts of iodine, which in turn affects the quality of or quantity of iodine in crops. In some areas, iodine deficient soils are more common, which makes it more likely that people will develop deficiencies. Um, efforts to reduce deficiencies, known as salt iodization, programs um, help reduce the rate of iodine deficiency in some parts of the impoverished world that experience high rates of ill health effects. <clears throat> Excuse me, but the surest way to prevent deficiencies and safest is to increase your intake of iodine rich foods. So, um, so some of the iodine rich foods including certain salts are eggs, sea vegetables, and fish. Um, and they help the thyroid. So let's go to iodine presents in foods and iodized salts contains several chemical forms of iodine including sodium and potassium salts. Inorganic iodine or I2 
Iodate and iodide. Iodine, iodine usually occurs as a salt and is called iodide when it does not. So, your recommended daily amount of iodine, um, let's see, dietary reference intakes or DRIs were developed by the Food and Nutrition Board at the Institute of Medicine of the National Academies and as a set of values uh, used for planning and assessing nutrient intakes for healthy people. According to the USDA, the recommended amount of iodine depends on your age and gender and are as follows. Birth to 6 months, 110 micrograms. 7 to 12 months, 130. 1 to 8 years, 90 micrograms. Why is it going down? Uh, nine, 9 to 13, 120 micrograms. 14 years and older, 150 micrograms. Pregnant women, 220 micrograms. And breastfeeding women, 290 micrograms. So, let's see. Um, if you eat more iodine-rich foods, especially the kind that naturally contain this mineral and aren't fortified, including sea vegetables in your diet is one of the best ways, considering their high iodine content along with other important minerals and antioxidants that they contain. Um, this is stuff such as kelp and nori and uh, kombu and wakame. Is that how you say that? Hmm... Other good iodine-rich foods include seaweed, raw and unpasteurized dairy products, certain whole grain products, and cage-free eggs. Um, it's believed that dairy products and grains are the major contributors to iodine in the average American's diet. Although, chances are people can afford to consume more raw, unpasteurized dairy and ancient whole grains rather than conventional dairy and packaged foods because that stuff is basically sterilized and so therefore doesn't really have a lot of goody for you. Uh, Dr. Axe always recommends consuming real salt, either Himalayan or Celtic sea salt as opposed to iodized table salt. Sea salt contains more than 60 trace minerals and doesn't pose a risk for overconsuming iodine like table salt does. It's also much more natural, beneficial, and tastes better, which yes, it does. Um, many supplements also contain iodine in the form of potassium iodide or sodium iodide, including many multivitamins. Kelp capsules also contain iodine. And these usually aren't necessary when someone consumes enough iodine-rich food and may even be dangerous if taken in high doses. So you don't want to overdose on it either. Um, okay. So the six reasons is because it supports your thyroid health. <clears throat> it helps to prevent cancer, which I think we all know the thyroid one. But I did not know this until I uh, checked it or, earlier in the day, iodine improves immunity and helps induce apoptosis, apopt, apoptosis, whatever that is. It's the self-destruction of dangerous cancerous cells. Huh. So while iodine can help destroy mutated cancer cells, it doesn't destroy healthy cells in the process. Unlike chemotherapy, for example, evidence shows that the ability of iodine-rich seafood or seaweed to inhibit breast tumor development, and this is supported by the relatively low rate of breast cancer in parts of the world like Japan, where women consume a diet high in iodine-rich seaweed. Ta-ta! It's good for the ta-tas! Number three, it prevents impaired growth and development in children. Yes, you need to, and remember, what was that monkey blood? 
that we used to put on on our fingers that red stuff whenever you got a cut god mama was that iodine mercuricum. oh mercuricum thank you um we always called it monkey blood number four it maintains healthy brain function which I did not know this. Iodine plays a big role in a healthy brain development and ongoing cognitive abilities. Therefore, iodine deficiency is believed to be one of the most common preventable causes of mental disorders in the world. Hmm. So, iodine-rich foods are, he finally got them listed here, um, seaweed or dried kelp, cod, wild caught, yogurt, organic, grass-fed, and ideally raw, raw milk, eggs, tuna, um, one can in oil, apparently is 11%, lima beans, um, corn, organic, you do not want the GMO corn, Prunes are also high in iodine. Cheeses, raw cheeses, uh, green peas, and bananas, which I eat an awful lot of bananas. Um, getting plenty of iodine also preserves skin health because it um, a common sign of iodine deficiency is dry, rough, or irritated skin that becomes flaky and inflamed. Iodine also helps regulate perspiration, so people might experience changes in how much they sweat if their iodine levels become imbalanced. And number six, it says, helps to control sweating and body temperature. And sweating is an important detoxification method that the body uses to discard toxins and even excess calories. So get your iodine in your body. Um, and he also has a few recipes here at the bottom of this to make you some iodine-rich foods. Awesome. You got to scroll way, way, way down. Um, he's got, um, an egg salad recipe, which I know how to make egg salad, but that's okay. A savory baked fish recipe, which sounds yummy. I do like baked fish. Mahi, mahi. I will have to talk to my brother-in-law about that because he can get mahi, mahi. A yogurt berry smoothie recipe. Mm -hmm. Razzle berries. Yum. And let's see. That's pretty much it for that. So I'll go ahead and share this with y'all. Dang. I'm just about out of time. Jibber, jabber, jibber, jabber. Thank you, Dr. Axe. No, thank you. What is that? Cook some good food on that fire now. Oh, good food, good food. Yes. Yeah, I know, Katie Troxel. It is hard to uh, find wheat that has not been sprayed with Roundup and yet there are some people out here that are no that are getting away from that but you got to stop and realize that um thank you oh mercurochrome is iodine thank you Katie Troxel um in any case there's been so much Roundup sprayed out here that it is in the soil and so it's going to take quite a few years of cleaning up the soil to get that out that's the problem with uh because it, it just does not go away and they're starting to find that uh glyphosate is you know they say that oh well it doesn't carry on in the food chain yes it does because now it's starting to show up in mother's milk so um dun 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 Oh, well, guess what? I think I'm pretty much done looking up things for the evening. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on RealLibertyMedia.com, Channel 3, also on the RLM Spreaker Channel and lots of other RLM and places, and also on the Real Liberty Media um, app 
for your smartphone or your other little device like your iPad or your tablet or what have you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, be sure to stick around because Grimmy and Moose Girl will be on later on this evening with the Freakers Ball. That's always a good time had by all. And yes, Grim, the Freakers Ball always has awesome tunage. So, um, yeah, tune in. Listen to Grimmy and Moose Girl. They've always got very interesting things to talk about. And they play some really cool tunes as well. I will be back tomorrow morning with Flash or Rooney Dork for the Dork Table. And uh, not real sure if um, JJ's is going to be playing tomorrow or not. But hey, check back. If not, he will be on webcom.co.uk. So... Because JJ's just loves to play music. Also, Sunday at noon, Grimner will be on. Or, yes, at noon, yeah, noon Eastern time, <laughs> Grimner will be on playing the blues. And hopefully there'll be a rousing game of Trivial Pursuit. And hey, guess what? I actually got a couple of answers last Sunday. Booyah, bonus points for me. I think I got two of them. <laughs> Of course, I was doing other things, too, so, yeah. But, um, yeah, Grimmy will be on playing the blues for y'all. And then, let's see, directly following Grimner will be Hal Anthony, who's going to take y'all behind the woodshed and open up a can of whoop-ass on yo ass. Hal always has very vital information. So, please, he's a smart guy, and he knows how to share his good stuff. So, give him a listen. Hal is always worth listening to. A lot of times, that's when I'm running errands. Sorry, Hal. So I listen to the podcast later. So I don't get to interact an awful lot because I'm doing other stuff. But I do listen in later. And then Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, Gary Ellen, Gigi's Boo with The Road Less Traveled. Rocket Chair will be back next week Wednesday for the Wacka 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 Doodle Wednesday edition of The Rocket Chair. But until then, wow. Look at this. I'm just about out of time, or I still got like three and a half minutes. Uh, on Goober Island, what is this, Goober? Let me check this shit out. Damn it. I got rumblies in the tumbly. <laughs> oh, Goober, is that your honey on Goober Island? Is that Ginger or Marianne? <laughs> oh and Vinny are you going to be calling in Vinny okay cool beans Vinny will be calling into the Freakers Ball this evening how awesome is that Vinny's still out in Vegas Vegas Vinny so I suppose you know what I'm just going to go ahead and get out of here because I'm hungry and my stomach's rumbling so y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening, and I will catch up you with you later on the Freaker's side. But until then, please remember, I truly do love you all, and I really do wish you all <laughs>